Okay, so um, I'm guessing that everyone that's here now isn't going to go into the hall. Or are you going into the hall? <laughs> You're going to stay here. Okay, all right then. So those of you who want to stay here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just um, read the gospel to you that, you that I'm going to read in the hall if you're not going to make uh, the procession uh, into the hall um, so that you don't miss out the beginning of this Mass, which I'm going to repeat in the hall. Um, so we shall begin. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection, for it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered into his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share in his resurrection and his life. I'd like to hold your branches up. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem, when he drew near Bethphage and Bethany, at the mount that is called Olivet. He sent two disciples, saying, Go into the village opposite, where on entering you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever yet sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why you are untying it, you'll say this, The Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went away and found it as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, Why are you untying the colt? And they said, The Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus. And throwing their garments on the colt, they sat Jesus upon it. And as he rode along, they spread their garments on the road. As he was drawing near at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees and the multitude said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. The Gospel of the Lord. If you please be seated and we'll join you soon from the hall.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who is an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Saviour to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue so that I may know how to reply to the wearied. He provides me with speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance. Neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to help so that I am untouched by the insults. So too, I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. His state was divine, 
Yet Christ Jesus did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and became as men are. And being as all men are, he was humbly yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth and in the underworld, should bend the knee at the name of Jesus, and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have longed to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, because I tell you, I shall not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then, taking a cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and share it among you, because from now on, I tell you, I shall not drink wine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took some bread, and when he had given thanks, broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which will be given for you. Do this as a memorial of me. He did the same with the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which will be poured out for you. And yet, here with me on the table is the hand of the man who betrays me. The Son of Man does indeed go to his fate, even as it has been decreed. But alas for that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to ask one another, which of them it could be who was to do this thing? A dispute arose also between them about which should be reckoned the greatest. But he said to them, Among pagans, it is the kings who lord it over them, and those who have authority over them are given the title benefactor. This must not happen with you. No, the greatest among you must behave as if he were the youngest, the leader as if he were the one who serves. For who is the greater, the one at table or the one who serves? The one at table, surely. Yet here am I among you as one who serves. You are the men who have stood by me faithfully in my trials, and now I confer a kingdom on you, just as my father conferred one on me. You will eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones to judge the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, Satan, you must know, has got his wish to sift you all like wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And once you have recovered, you in your turn must strengthen your brothers. He answered, Lord, I would be ready to go to prison with you and to death. Jesus replied, I tell you, Peter, by the time the cock crows, you will have denied me three times that you know me. He said to him, when I sent you out without purse or haversack or sandals, were you short of anything? They answered, no. He said to them, but now if you have a purse, take it. If you have a haversack, do the same. If you have no sword, sell your cloak and buy one. Because I tell you, these words of scripture have to be fulfilled in me. He let himself be taken for a criminal. Yes, what scripture says about me is even now reaching its fulfillment. They said, Lord, there are two swords here now. He said to them, That is enough. He then left the upper room 
to make his way as usual to the Mount of Olives with the disciples following. When they reached the place, he said to them, Pray not to be put to the test. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw away and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, let your will be done, not mine. Then an angel appeared to him, coming from heaven to give him strength. In his anguish, he prayed even more earnestly, and his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. When he rose from prayer, he went to the disciples and found them sleeping for sheer grief. He said to them, Why are you asleep? Get up and pray not to be put to the test. He was still speaking when a number of men appeared. At the head of them, the man called Judas, one of the twelve, who went up to Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? His followers, seeing what was happening, said, Lord, shall we use our swords? And one of them struck out at the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. But at this Jesus spoke and he said, Leave off, that will do. And touching the man's ear, he healed it. Then Jesus spoke to the chief priests and the captains of the temple's temple guards and elders who had come for him. He said, Am I a brigand that you had to set out with swords and clubs? When I was among you in the temple day after day, you never moved to lay hands on me. For this is your hour. This is the reign of darkness. They seized him then and led him away. And they took him to the high priest's house. Peter followed at a distance. They had lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard, and Peter sat down among them. And as he was sitting there by the blaze, a servant girl saw him, peered at him, and said, This person was with him too. But he denied it. He said, Woman, I do not know him. Shortly afterwards, someone else saw him and said, You are another of them. But Peter replied, I am not, my friend. About an hour later, another man insisted, saying, This fellow was certainly with him. Why, he is a Galilean. Peter said, My friend, I do not know what you are talking about. At that instant, while he was still speaking, the cock crew, and the Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. And Peter remembered what the Lord had said to him. Before the cock crows today, you will have disowned me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Meanwhile, the men who guarded Jesus were mocking and beating him. They blindfolded him and questioned him, saying, Play the prophet. Who hit you then? And they continued heaping insults on him. When the day broke, there was a meeting of the elders of the people, attended by the chief priests and scribes. He was brought before the council, and they said to him, If you are the Christ, tell us. He replied, If I tell you, you would not believe me. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. Then they all said, So you are the Son of God, Lord. He answered, It is you who say I am. They said, What need of witnesses have we now? We have heard it for ourselves from his own lips. The whole assembly then rose, and they brought him before Pilate. They began their accusations by saying, We found this man inciting our people to revolt, proposing payment of the tribute to Caesar, and claiming to be Christ, a king. Pilate put to him this question. Are you the king of the Jews? He replied, It is you who say it. Pilate then said to the chief priests and the crowd, I find no case against this man. But they persisted. 
He is inflaming the people with his teaching all over Judea. It has come all the way from Galilee, where he started, down to here. When Pilate heard this, he asked if the man were a Galilean. And finding that he came under Herod's jurisdiction, he passed him over to Herod, who, who was also in Jerusalem at the time. Herod was delighted to see Jesus. He had heard about him and had been wanting for a long time to set eyes on him. Moreover, he was hoping to see some of the miracles worked by him. So he questioned him at some length, but without getting a reply. Meanwhile, the chief priests and the scribes were there, violently pressing their accusations. Then Herod, together with his guards, treated him with contempt and made fun of him. He put a rich cloak on him and sent him back to Pilate. And though Herod and Pilate had been at enemies before, they were reconciled that day. Pilate then summoned the chief priests and the leading men and the people. He said, You brought this man before me as a political agitator. Now I have gone into the matter myself, in your presence, and, no, and found no case against the man in respect of all the charges you bring against him. Nor has Herod either, since he has sent him back to us. As you can see, the man has done nothing that deserves death. So I shall have him flogged and then let him go. But as one man they howled. Away with him, give us Barabbas. This man had been thrown in prison for causing a riot in the city and for murder. Pilate was anxious to set Jesus free and address them again, but they shouted back, Crucify him! Crucify him! And for the third time he spoke to them. Why? What harm has this man done? I have found no case against him that deserves death, so I shall have him punished and then let him go. But they kept on shouting at the top of their voices, demanding that he should be crucified, and their shouts were growing louder. Pilate then gave his verdict. Their demand was to be granted. He released the man they asked for, who had been in prison for rioting and murder, and handed Jesus over to them to deal with as they pleased. As they were leading him away, they seized on a man, Simon from Cyrene, who was coming in from the country and made him shoulder the cross and carry it behind Jesus. Large numbers of people followed him, and of women too, who mourned and lamented for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep rather for yourselves and for your children. For the days will surely come when people will say, Happy are those who are barren, the wombs that have never borne, the breasts that have never suckled. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, to the hills, cover us. For if men use the green wood like this, what will happen when it is dry? Now with him, they were also leading out two other criminals to be executed. When they reached the place called the Skull, they crucified him there and the two criminals also, one on the right, the other on the left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. And then they cast lots to share out his clothing. The people stayed there watching him. As for the leaders, they jeered at him, saying, he saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers mocked him too, and when they approached to offer him vinegar, they said, If you are the King of the Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription, This is the King of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging there abused him, saying, are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us as well. 
But the other spoke up and rebuked him. Have you no fear of God at all? You got the same sentence he, as he did. But in our case, we deserved it. We are paying for what we did. But this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Indeed, I promise you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now the sixth hour, and with the sun eclipsed, a darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. The veil of the temple was torn right down the middle, and when Jesus had cried out in a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. With these words, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he gave praise to God and said, This was a great and good man. And when all the people who were gathered for the spectacle saw what had happened, they went home beating their breasts. All his friends stood at a distance. So also did the women who had accompanied him from Galilee. And they saw all this happen. Then a member of the council arrived, an upright and virtuous man named Joseph. He had not consented to what the others had planned and carried out. He came from Arimathea, a Jewish town, and he lived in the hope of seeing the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. He then took it down, wrapped it in a shroud, and put him in a tomb which was hewn from a stone in which no one had yet been laid. It was preparation day, and the Sabbath was imminent. Meanwhile, the women who had come from Galilee with Jesus were following behind. They took note of the tomb and the position of the body. Then they returned and prepared spices and ornaments, ointments. On the Sabbath day, they rested as the law required. The Gospel of the Lord. So, you may have noticed that in the first Gospel that we heard at the beginning of Mass, when we remember that Jesus rode into Jerusalem, he sat on a donkey, but he told um, his followers to go into Jerusalem, and, and he said, you'll find a donkey, and when you find it, tell the person who owns it that the master has need of it. The master has need of it. I love donkeys. I, I think they're, they're, they're very gentle, very humble creatures. And maybe that's why Jesus chose this little horse, this little donkey, to ride into Jerusalem. He didn't want to ride on something as impressive as a, as a stallion or something like that. No, he chose this humble donkey who had this one job. His most important job in his whole life to carry Jesus to the place where he will die. Jesus had been carried on a donkey before. If you remember rightly, um, at Jesus' birth, Mary sat pregnant with Jesus on a donkey that took him to his place of birth, Bethlehem. So there was a donkey carrying Jesus to his place of birth. It seems fitting that there is a donkey carrying him to his place of death. Now, why do I mention 
this donkey. Because those donkeys had a very important job. The master had need of it. Now, the reason why I mention that is because all of us have a purpose. God has called us to do something similar to that donkey, to bring Jesus into situations that maybe are a little unusual. So Jesus was born in a stable of all places. Who took him there? The donkey. He brought Jesus to his place of birth, a place of joy. We are also called to carry Christ like that donkey into places of joy. But also, a donkey carried Jesus into his place of death. We are called also to carry Jesus into the darkest places, into, into death. And there, Jesus will bring something to that situation. But we are called, like that donkey, to bring Christ into people's lives. You see, all of us have a purpose, as that donkey did. All of us have a purpose to bring that light into all kinds of situations. Mother Teresa, my, my, probably my favorite saint, Saint Teresa of Calcutta, Mother Teresa, she was someone who brought light into a situation in Calcutta. When she saw that man dying um, on the road, that leper, she could have said no, no, I'm not going to do it. I know the master has need of me, but I won't do it. Imagine that great ministry of care for the least, for the ones that were dying with nothing on the road. If, Mary, if Mother Teresa had said no, that wouldn't have happened. But she said yes, because like that donkey, she knew that the master has need of it. See, we are all called, I think, to bring Christ into situations. Whoever you are, you are called to radiate Christ, if you will, to bring the light, the warmth of Christ into the world. Someone once said to me, they said, there are, there are two types of, of, of people. There's radiators and there's drains. And I thought, I, I don't fully understand that. And they explained it. They said a radiator is wonderful. When you come in from the cold, when it's been raining and it's been chilly or very cold and icy, you come into your house and if a radiator's on, you very often go and put your hands on a radiator because it gives off this wonderful heat, this warmth that you desperately need. That's what a radiator is like and that's what we're called to be, to be radiators, to radiate Christ to the world, to bring Christ, the warmth of Christ into the world like that donkey did. But what we're not called to be is like drains. What do drains do? Well, working properly, what they do is they, they literally suck everything away. They, they don't give anything. They take away. They take everything. They don't give back. As Christians, that's not what we're called to do. We're called to give. Now, that donkey gave what he could give, but also we recognize, of course, Christ on the cross gave everything that he had for us and more. On the cross, he was suffering there and he gave himself entirely for others. So today, as we remember that donkey carrying Jesus into Jerusalem, so that Jesus could die. We remember that that donkey realized that he had a job, a purpose, to bring Christ into that situation. We look at Jesus Christ giving himself entirely for others, thinking of, of, of the criminal that was dying before him and saying to you will be in paradise with me, forgiving those from the cross that, that, were, that were doing it to him. He was thinking of them, praying for them. He was, if you will, the supreme radiator, giving off so much light, so much warmth to those around him. So let's pray that we will be like that donkey. 
we will be a radiator. We will be like Christ, for the Master has need of you. Amen. And now to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus Christ, today we hear the story of the last week of your ordinary life. Help us to remember everything you did for us and how you died for us. And now hear our prayers we bring before you. As Pope Francis laments the massacre of civilians in Kyiv, suburb of Bucha, during Russian's occupation of the area, he reviews his call for the end of the war in Ukraine and asks us to continue to pray for peace. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the thousands of people that are fleeing Ukraine's Donbass as Russia shifts the focus of its attacks to the east of the country. May they be kept safe and greeted with warm shelter. Lord, in your mercy. We are at a crossroads in determining the decisions we make and how we can have a secure and livable future, preventing climate change. Let us find the tools and knowledge required to limit warming, and we pray governments act through policies and regulations to support reductions and stimulate innovation. Lord, in your mercy. As the signs of the latest wave of COVID infections may have peaked in children and young adults, we pray for those in older groups and those most vulnerable to severe de disease to be protected and that cases in these groups begin to fall. Lord, in your mercy. As bills increase and the cost of living soars, we pray for those currently burdened by financial woes. Help us to be grateful for all we have and reach out to those most in need. Lord, in your mercy. We ask Our Lady to carry out petitions to her son Jesus, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. As we enter Passion Tide, we take a moment to pray for our own petitions. Loving Lord, as we follow the events of Holy Week, help us to draw closer to our faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Almighty and eternal God in Christ our Lord. For, though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners. And accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his reconciliation has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim you. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Patrick Callaghan and for the intentions of Marie Jackson Lang. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another for your son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God, I offer you the body and the soul and the In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of his death and resurrection, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly ask you to accept us together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to give us his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Alan our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. 
Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. May this mingling with the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ be eternal. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call through Christ our Lord. If you please be seated just for a few notices. So, this, as you know, is Holy Week, and so there are different masses and services throughout the week that I just want to draw to your uh, attention. So on Wednesday, we'd normally have a 10 o'clock mass at St. John Fisher, but I can't do that mass because there is an 11 o'clock mass at the cathedral, known as the Chrism Mass, where all the priests of the diocese come together and they renew their, 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 their vows as a, as, a, as a priest, their promises as a priest, but also the oils are blessed, the sacred oils that are used for the sacraments throughout the year. Now, if you can get there, 11 o'clock at Brentwood Cathedral, it would be lovely to see you there. It's wonderful to see um, the, the priests come together, but also the holy oils blessed. So if you can make it, 11 o'clock this Wednesday at Brentwood Cathedral. Now, on Thursday, which is Monday Thursday, where I wash the, the feet uh, of some parishioners, and we also remember the institution of the Mass and of the priesthood, um, will be 7.30 on Thursday night. And we will be watching um, in the chapel uh, by the sanctuary at St. John Fisher until 10 p.m. So uh, if you could join us for that, that would be great too. And then on Friday, we have Children's Stations of the Cross on Good Friday at 10 a.m. If you can come to that, it's lovely to see children participating in the Stations of the Cross. That's 10 a.m. on Good Friday. And then at 3 p.m., we have the great solemn liturgy of Good Friday, when we come to venerate the cross. And also at 7.30 at St. John Fisher, there will be a similar uh, mass to uh, remember our Lord's sacrifice also on uh, that day. Then on Holy Saturday, there's no mass in the morning, but there will be confessions here at 10. But then on the Saturday night, there's no 5.30 p.m. mass because we will have our Easter vigil at 8 p.m. where we will be welcoming three people into the church. So please do join us then um, if you can. And then the normal mass is on the Sunday morning. Now, if you, as you leave, you'll notice a couple of things in the porch. One of them will be a Holy Week poster. And if you can take one, put one in the front, your front window so that people can see or somewhere on the front of your building so that people can, can know and understand this is the holiest week of the year. Now, if you're going to Lourdes, you would have received a link. Um, if you can complete the form as soon as you can, the deadline is Tuesday the 19th of March. Now, there are also Divine Mercy leaflets in the porch and the novena starts on Good Friday, but we have a special service of Divine Mercy which will take place here at Sacred Heart on Sunday the 24th at 2.30 p.m. The Walsingham Pilgrimage on Saturday the 28th of May. It looks like there's enough people going, so we'll be able to hire a coach. It'll be about £20 uh, for, for, for that coach, but we'll confirm shortly after Easter. The next baptism course on, is on Monday the 25th of April here in the hall. If you wish to attend, please fill in a form available from the porch and return to the parish office by Tuesday the 19th of April. And there is a quiz on Saturday the 23rd of April at Sacred Heart Church starting at 7pm. If you wish to join us, please see the newsletter and contact those selling tickets. So if you can come to one or all of the services during Holy Week, it would be lovely to see you there. If not, we shall see you next Sunday when we can celebrate that our Lord has risen from the dead. If you please stand now for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May mighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended.
almost the same colour, isn't it? 